Hey everyone, welcome. Today, we're gonna dive deep and unpack a really significant new study that tackles a complex and frankly, very important question. We're looking at the auger findings from 2025. So here's the central question. Does abortion have an impact on long-term mental health? You know, for years, researchers have been grappling with this, but a lot of the previous work, well, it had some pretty serious limitations. But now, this 2025 study from Augur and her team sets out to give us one of the clearest pictures we've ever had. Let's see what they found out. All right, here's our game plan for breaking this all down. First, we'll look at what makes this study so groundbreaking. Then, we'll get into its incredible size and scale. After that, we'll see how the researchers zeroed in on a really key factor. Then we'll hit the main results, look at a super important distinction they made, and wrap it all up with the study's big takeaway. Okay, first up, let's talk about what this study actually is and, you know, why it's making such waves. So this research comes to us from Natalie Auger and her team up in Quebec, Canada, and it was published in the prestigious Journal of Psychiatric Research. They basically wanted to clear up some of the fog from past studies. Their big goal? to figure out what, if any, are the long-term mental health risks after an induced abortion, and to do it using some really solid, large-scale evidence. Okay, and this next part is what really makes this study a potential game-changer. It is all about the massive scope and scale. Seriously, the numbers here are what truly set it apart from what's come before. First off, just look at this number. They analyzed data from over 1.2 million pregnancies. This isn't some small survey. We're talking about a massive population-wide study, which gives their findings some serious muscle. And it's not just the number of people, it's the timeline. They followed these patients for up to 17 years. That is a huge deal because it lets them track potential issues that you totally miss in a shorter study that only looks at a year or two. And on average, the follow-up time for each and every patient was more than nine years. So you've got this giant group of people tracked over a really long time. That's the powerful combo that forms the backbone of this whole methodology. Now, here's where things get a little tricky, and it's a classic problem in this kind of research. How do you know if mental health issues that show up later are connected to the abortion or if they're related to something that was already there before? It's a tough nut to crack, but let's see how this team handled it. This is what scientists call a confounding factor, or a pre-existing risk. Essentially, it's something that could be muddying the waters. And in this case, a pre-existing mental health condition is a big one. So the million-dollar question for the researchers was, can we peel that away? Can we somehow isolate the risk of the procedure itself? And here's their strategy. First, they went through all that data and flagged every single patient who had a diagnosed mental health issue either before or during their pregnancy. Then they used some pretty sophisticated statistical models to adjust their results, basically to mathematically account for the influence of those prior conditions. And what you're left with is a much, much cleaner look at the associations. All right, so they've got this massive data set, this long timeline, and this clever way of adjusting for risk. So what did they actually find? Let's get into the results for the whole group. Well, the first big number that jumps out is pretty striking. The study reported that the rate of hospitalization for serious mental health problems was about 104 per 10,000 person years following an induced abortion. And don't worry, person years is just a way for scientists to track events in big groups over time. Now, compare that to the rate for other pregnancies, which was just 42. So a pretty big difference right off the bat. And remember, this is after they did all that statistical work to account for pre-existing conditions. Even with that adjustment, the study found a significantly greater associated risk for all three of the severe outcomes they were tracking. We're talking about an 81% greater risk for psychiatric disorders, more than double the risk for suicide attempts, and get this, over two and a half times the risk for substance use disorders. But they didn't stop there. They took it one crucial step further. They wanted to know, okay, is this risk the same for everyone? So they split the data into two buckets, women who already had a history of mental illness and women who didn't. And this is where the picture gets really detailed. Okay, so for the women who did have a pre-existing mental illness, the risk of hospitalization was huge, more than nine times greater. That confirms what we already know, that prior history is the strongest predictor. But, and this is the really key distinction, for the women with no prior history of mental illness, the study still found an associated risk that was nearly one and a half times greater. And honestly, this is one of the biggest takeaways from the entire paper. 
It suggests that while the risk is much, much more pronounced for those with a known history, an elevated association was still there even for women who were, on paper, considered mentally healthy beforehand. So let's wrap this all up. After analyzing over a million pregnancies for up to 17 years and carefully adjusting for risk factors, what's the bottom line? What did the study's authors themselves say this all means? All right, let's just run through the core takeaways one last time. The study's conclusion is that induced abortion is associated with a higher risk of being hospitalized for severe mental disorders. That includes psychiatric disorders, substance use, and suicide attempts. And the really critical point is that this elevated risk association was found in patients both with and without a prior history of mental health concerns. Because of this, the authors conclude that these findings shine a light on a clear need for patient screening and support. And that really leaves us with a final crucial thought to chew on. The study points toward a very practical application, using better screening to identify women who could benefit from more support. So it makes you wonder, how might massive population-level data like this actually reshape the future of patient care? It's definitely something to consider. Thank you so much for joining us for this explainer. 